Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Urban Legends video. One final entry for this particular series, the theme being this time around, haunted or cursed items that are fascinating to talk about. Then I'll wait for a couple of weeks and then I'll bring out some uh, new recommendations and then get your suggestions off those and continue from there. This particular item I came across the other day when I was looking up information about the Hands Resist Us painting and this one was tied to it on several of the websites that I looked at. A very very fascinating item. I've never heard of this particular urban legend, this cursed item or haunted item before but I thought it would uh, be something that would be really interesting to share with everybody there um, if you have heard of this um, especially if you're in the Texas area that tends to explain uh, the knowledge of this item it seems to be like a local item of sorts but for those of you that are outside the Galveston area this is something like to me this is brand new so in this case this urban legend is called the portrait of Bernardo de Galvez and you'll see a picture of it here by the way the picture as you see it as of this moment the urban legend that's tied to it is the fact that this painting can actually change uh, much like the hands resist this painting this painting can change but it's pretty much changing based on free will and what I mean is this in order to take a proper picture of this painting you must ask permission from Bernardo de Gavis himself in order to get a true clear picture and I'll talk about that more here in a few minutes uh, first a brief history regarding the painting and then where it's located and of Bernardo himself the painting is located in a hotel uh, a hotel that's considered a historic hotel called the Hotel Galvez um, it's considered historic because it was opened back in 1911 so a good number of years back over a hundred years so much so that back in the 1970s um, early 80s somewhere around there it was registered in the National Register of Historic Places so it is a historic landmark for all intents and purposes I've never stayed at this hotel I've been to Galveston only once in my life back when I was younger so I've never come across this hotel but it is a pretty famous hotel lots of famous people lots of dignitaries have stayed there past presidents um, have stayed there such as Franklin uh, Roosevelt um, celebrities like Sinatra apparently have stayed there as well um, it's, it's a place where if you're in Galveston and let's say you have a prominent status of sorts people do stay there and even to this day uh, it's gone through multiple renovations it seems like the history that I was looking it up on um, every 10 years or so there's always a renovation being done with the hotel which is good I mean it's it's a historic hotel it's nice to see that it wasn't left in a living decay type mode instead it's frequently updated, it's frequently looked at, it's made sure that even to this day it remains a place for tourists to go see. And in one particular reason, the tourists come to this hotel for this painting, the, uh, the painting that I'm talking about here for my urban legend. Now let's talk about the actual gentleman within the painting himself, uh, itself. Uh, his name is again is Bernardo de Galvez and he was a military leader back during the Revolutionary War. Uh, what was interesting to note was he was actually not really American like he wasn't on the US side instead he was on the Spanish side he was from Spain but him and the Americans were both fighting a common enemy in this case the British and this was during the Revolutionary War and they were both fighting to help America gain its independence he led several of the important battles apparently there was the Battle of Baton Rouge that was a particular uh, noted battle because it essentially freed Louisiana from the threat of the British and that was a pretty important place a pretty important capital at that time but yeah he helped out with the expedi uh, with the Revolutionary War he helped out with multiple um, battles helped win them so much so that when America gained its independence he was there front and center with George Washington um, in fact, uh, there was a parade on July 4th during the independence that George Washington had him right there to his right during the parade. And he was also 
um, cited by the Congress at that time for his aid for everything that he did. In fact, um, after the um, Revolutionary War and uh, America's success, the city of Galveston was named for him. So there's a little bit of history for you. The reason why it's called Galveston is because of the gentleman's last name, Galvez, which is pretty fascinating. Never heard of that one before. So it's interesting to hear about these little tidbits of history and how they come across today, and, and it makes you do that little thing in your head where oh so that's why it's called that yep that's him so that's the history tied with him pretty important gentleman pretty important man um and i tried to find history as far as the painting itself and tried to see like who commissioned it who drew it when it was painted unfortunately it doesn't seem to be much um, there's very little information tied to the creation of this painting other than but for the fact that it's there in the hotel still to this day i'm just going for the presumption then that the painting was probably put there sometime let's say either during the creation of the hotel like after it was opened or let's say it was placed shortly after because it seems to be a painting that has been there for a very long time and the reason why it's considered haunted or cursed is because it all ties to what I talked about earlier um, in the video. If you want to take a picture of this painting, and you can do so at any point when you visit the hotel, there's nothing tied to it, there's no glass display, there's no veil, there's nothing, um, it's not in an area that's sanctioned off from the public. No, it's open, it's out there, it's in one of the hallways straight there within the hotel. All you have to do is just walk up to it. But the idea and the theme goes that the only way to take a crystal clear picture of the painting is to ask permission from the gentleman. And in this case, the gentleman straight in the painting. If you do not, then every single picture that you take thereafter will not be visible. And in fact, you'll see some pictures um, while I'm talking about it here. Um, so some of the paintings, uh, the way that it shows up on the pictures, it's either like blurred purposely blurred while everything else surrounding it is clear or it's completely different in fact you're looking at a picture now where it looks like it's it's weird i mean it, it's 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 like a black oil of some sort that seems to be permeating within the picture itself like like a swirling mass of some kind of dark liquid it's so weird it does not look like the painting the person that took this picture they, he was part of a paranormal group that went to the hotel and uh, tried to see you know, about the painting itself and see about the urban legend tied to it. He swears that this picture was not altered in any way whatsoever, but for the fact that uh, it was done without asking permission from uh, Bernard. And then when that happened, uh, sure enough, when the p uh, picture was later looked at, the painting is gone like the painting itself is not visible at all but yeah that's the idea the theme that if you do not ask Bernardo any permission tied to taking a picture of him then it will always show up altered or it won't show up at all very fascinating theory I'm, I'm asking right now if anybody out there has actually taken this challenge up and be able to go to Galveston and go straight to this hotel and see if that's true. Again, several examples that I've shown seem to prove that that is the case, but as always, it's it's really nice to hear it um, straight from one of my listeners to see if anyone else has done this or uh, if anyone has heard of others, friends, family members, whoever, that have taken this challenge and tried it out for themselves. By the way, the reason why the painting might seem to have a life of its own is two reasons. Number one, um, it actually has that same thing where whenever people are walking around it, people are walking towards it or away from it, whatever, there seems to be the notion that the painting is looking right back at you. Not just like in the way like the Mona Lisa is looking back at you. Um, I was talking about that in one of my other videos. There's that term, and thank you for one of the users for saying it. I think it's called uh, ubiquitous gaze with regards to eyes that look like they're always following you in a painting. And it's done in a perfect way where if you position the eyes in a certain manner, then sure enough, you can have the eyes always follow you no matter what angle you're in. But what people say with regards to this painting 
is that not only are the eyes looking at like following you with regards to any location but the eyes are really looking at you like it's as if somebody is back there is within the painting itself like like the eyes you're looking at the eyes and the eyes are truly looking back at you like something living in other words is looking at you and people have mentioned that they get the shutters that they get this ill feeling that they get this chill or uneasiness anytime they approach the painting let alone try to take a picture of it um, which is quite freaky um it's it's i don't know if if it's if it's something associated with um maybe the air or something along those lines but for many people to claim that they have this uneasiness this uh unnerving feeling each time they're around that painting that is pretty creepy F coupled with the fact again that the eyes uh they can follow you that they can actually um uh look at you they're looking at you in other words as you're looking back at them and then the second reason that this painting is said to be um haunted or cursed is because the whole hotel itself has multiple stories of of curse I'm sorry of haunted items haunted areas haunted experiences there's a whole multitude of them in fact I'll go I'll go over just a quick brief synopsis of them um, this comes from a website called galvestonghost.com and it was a, t a group of, of several people that went to that hotel to try to experience the haunted locations the areas that were there in the hotel itself um, think of it like you know ghost adventures like anybody that gets together and they just go to a specific place to try to capture evidence tied to it and there's a, supposedly a fifth floor that is supremely haunted like it is the most haunted floor out of the entire floor i don't know if this painting is on the fifth floor or not uh, presumably it's on the bottom floor as um, it tends to be the thing with hotels with regards to their large paintings they tend to put them in areas where the most public will be but the fifth floor in this hotel is said to be really haunted because there's apparently a woman that committed suicide once she found out that one uh, that her lover was not coming back from the war and ever since then she roams the hallways and calls and and causes mishaps and causes noises and does basic disruptions um, because of her angst um, in fact that ghost team on the website said that they were able to catch like several doors rattling or trying to rattle open uh, banging doors locking against I mean banging against the lock inside them um, also, they were able to capture uh, sounds as if somebody were running towards the hallway, even with people there um, looking directly in the hallway as it's happening. They can hear somebody like running around within the hallway itself, and then you'll see a picture here what they were able to capture as far as apparitions within the hotel as well um, all of this stuff again on that website galvestonghost.com straight from the hotel itself um, I tried to see why the hotel would be haunted uh, other than the woman there weren't really other tales tied to um, other people committing bad acts or anything as far as other tales like the hotel being built on a cemetery or anything like that so I don't know exactly why the hotel remains so haunted but who knows it could be haunted by the ghosts of the painting itself Bernardo de Galvez maybe he because he was such a frequent uh, he was a person that was so frequently there in that area during the uh, Revolutionary War and of course even after the um, winning of the war and then later on America gaining its independence maybe he loved that area so much that he decided to stay in the afterlife in that area and because of it he himself probably realized the hotel and the painting that hangs of himself there so that could be him looking straight at you anytime you go towards the painting and especially if you try to take a picture of it without his permission freaky freaky stuff um, I'll be interested to try it myself if I'm ever in the Galveston area again again I was only in there 
once in my life and I was there when I was much younger but if it happens in the future and I happen to visit that area uh, then I'll try to see try to see where this hotel is located because it'll be fascinating to check out that painting and then to try that challenge and see if it's true and please if anyone listening right now if you have um, experience with this urban legend with the challenge tied to it um, please post your comments share them below be it'd be great to hear any insight that people might have on this so all right everybody thanks again as always take care bye